the new Lennox Power Arc Jigsaw Blades cut through more steel plate, pipe, or tubing with ease, delivering up to two times the life of the previous generation Lennox blades. The Power Arc Curve Profile optimizes the angle of attack for fast cutting and long life when cutting metal. The new cutting edge technology delivers up to 7.6 times the life of Bosch. Go with the leader in cutting performance. Go with Lennox. All right, the only difference between those guys out there and myself I make this look good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Termite Machine Works. My name is Keith. And this is going to be a product video versus a project video like this one coming up. Don't forget to subscribe. You're not going to want to miss this one. All right, over two months ago, I was invited to a media event over near Springfield, East Longmeadow Plant Linux. And... Um, so we went over there and we were promised to see uh, new products that are coming up uh, November of this uh, this year. And um, so we got an early peek and we get to tell you about it. Um, so we had new product that we got the hands-on test. You're going to see that in a moment. And we got a, a tour of the plant. You'll get to see some of that. Just like any company that has the cutting edge above their competitors um, you've got a you got to hold a little secrecy so we weren't allowed to just freely uh, video everything else which was fine uh, you know I I've always had a love relationship with Linux and I'm gonna go over three of my go-to items that I've been using since the early 80s if not the late 70s um, so Let's, uh, let's take a look at those, and then I'm going to tell you about the event and also the chance for you to get some free samples. All right. Okay, i got to go up to the front of the shop and get one of uh, my uh, props, and I have another one hanging on over there, and I'll be right back. Um, while I'm walking in here and, and picking up this item here, I want to let you know that Linux asked me, I wanted to review their product and invited me over there and I'm doing this video as a review for them I chose to do that I, in fact I actually chose to um, put that 30 second spot ad at the beginning of the video and I want to speak freely about my experience with Linux because it is it is a, a a reasonable share and I'm not just up here all of a sudden selling Linux products to you in fact actually I'm here to tell you about my experience with Linux and also give you the opportunity to pick up something for yourself as a sample all right what I have here and I I just over the years I ended up picking up Linux hacksaw frames when this style frame came on over uh, with the crank and adjustment and uh, lightweight aluminum this one this one here actually might have a metal uh, back here and this one here is this is all aluminum anyway both of these have got Linux blades in them Linux blades I think the earliest that I can recollect that I was using Linux blades was in 82 83 I was in the uh, the machine shop there at uh, Atkinson Marine, and uh, Maynard, my uh, supervisor, uh, he uh, says, "Come on over here, Keith." And so I went over there, and uh, he had a representative from Starrett. And we bought a lot of Starrett micrometers and that kind of thing. But they had Starrett hacksaw blades. And he says, "You want to you want to put that up against what we're using?" And I said, "Sure." So I went over and I got my hacksaw, and I was had uh, Linux blades in it. And uh, so we grabbed a uh, B16. We do a lot of B16 studs for steams and stuff like that in the yards. Uh, we had a grade 8. We had a stainless steel. I think those were our three, three test components we had. And we compared the Linux hacksaw blade with that Starrett 
uh, blade that he was bringing in and was trying to supply our yard with uh, steric blades. Needless to say, he left without leaving us any blades or selling us any blades. The Linux hands down took it over that steric hacksaw back in the 80s. Um, I, I just always have a go-to. Every once in a while, you might get a new hacksaw, <laughs> or well, actually, you won't get one of these without a Linux blade in them. But uh, in fact, sometimes those those uh, hacksaw frames actually come with a, a pack. Anyway, um, I have a I just dug this out of the the roll away, and uh, and I have I always have one good used blade on the back side here. But I'm down to four good blades. And when I get down to the last blade, I go ahead and order. I have two hacksaws, and they're, you know, the blade's worn, it, uh, I'll change it out. But you can see that I've got a lot of life on those. So there's, there's one of three items that I have as go-to Linux items. All right, let's go, uh, let's go out in the shelter and take a look at that. All right, I brought you out here. I put you up above there. You're looking over the bridge port here. Buffy, in fact, we're going to continue uh, the video on uh, Buffy going together. So there's another reason to subscribe and stick around. Um, for those of you that didn't see my videos in my collection, when I got this saw and I tore it down and repaired, replaced what needed to be fixed on it, you knew that I changed out to new blades and at that time I still got a couple of the boxes I, I don't know one of these boxes here was at that original time because I bought two blades I think I was using uh, what I got uh, I got uh, four six and six ten are my two uh, TPIs that I uh, choose from in case I'm doing big stuff or uh, smaller diameter or thin walls um, you want the finer teeth so that you're not dropping down and catching it you know the 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 teeth spread has got to be <laughs> shorter than your material spread. All right. I run the classic um, in here, and I can I can get a long life out of that classic blade because I'm running that kerosene cutting oil 50-50 mix, and that's what I run in here. I, I set it up. That's, that's what we ran at Atkinson, and uh, some of the old timers that I was in there, um, uh, we, we ran it in the bandsaw, but we also ran it in the power hacksaw, and I believe we were running Linux power hacksaw blades as well, and I think I still have one somewhere in the box, but I couldn't find it today. Um, so, by running that mixture, I'm able to come out here in the middle of winter when there's snow on the ground and it's uh, below freezing, and I can still fire this off, and I still got cutting fluid um, lubricating that blade as it's going through the material. You know, not not every saw I had, I ran I ran uh, that Delta four by six. You saw it in some of my earlier videos, and I ran my go-to blade. There was MSC had a Sterrett blade that was made up, and it was exactly the right size for that oddball that I had, and uh, I I used that for many years. But when it came time to have a serious size saw, and uh, uh, you know, when you start getting up in blade size, you're spending more money and I wanted to make sure that I was getting my money's worth and I stuck with something that I was sure of and that was proof from my prior experience of so 43 years 44 years in the trade right now and I reflect back on what lasts the longest and what gave the best performance and that's kind of what I gauge on uh, what I use as far as consumables and blades are uh, they're an accessory, but they are consumable as well. Uh, the, they don't last forever, but I tell you what, um, I haven't had to order blades in, in a couple years. I'm not out here cutting every single day with this thing, but sometimes I'm out here and I'm cutting all day long. So all around good, good running saw. I'm happy. The blade makes this saw. All right. Let's go in. I want to show you the third uh, item that I have in my shop that is a go-to item for Linux. Okay, this looks like a little shithole, but <laughs> it is. It's mine. <laughs> All right, in this top drawer right here, I don't have I don't have an actual hole saw kit. Okay, but over the time period that I've been collecting hole saws, and I've had I've had some of the cheaper kits, and I've tried to get by with less than. 
then I still have some of the less than in the back here but there's a there's another Linux there there's a Linux there okay I had a couple arbors that failed over the years and I also had to make a couple extensions and I had to make do but I had to I had to get her done and uh, the Linux uh, was able to get in there and get it done here's another one uh, I had a failure here on this driver here and then finally I got the right driver and uh, put the combination together and there's another Linux hole saw and once in a while I'm actually not so much because I'm not doing field work like I was but uh, a lot of times I was out in the field and uh, I needed to put in the holes here in the shop a lot of times I have other means to put in holes but there's still that occasion that a hole saw in a bridge port uh, gets her done or a hole saw in that big drill press or even a hole saw uh, on a on an item that's uh, being fabricated in the front of the shop so hole saws are also my go-to brand is Linux and when I go down to the store and I pick up one I'm picking up a Linux and you can see that the, they're not all new you know that but I still they're they're still sharp and they're still doing the job all right so I want to share those three items that are my go-to items that are manufactured by Linux <laughs> All right, uh, let's just cover a little bit about my trip to uh, East Longmeadow. Um, we, we took a shuttle on over from the hotel over to the plant, and when we got off the shuttle there, I ran out on the grass there. Uh, a lot of us uh, from the media group there were getting some pictures of the front of the, sh of, uh, the plant there. And uh, I set up my little Osmos right there on the ground, and, um, and, and of course I clicked it on. But I didn't have my phone uh, seeing what was going on, so the backlighting was just a little bit off there. But you can, you can get the, uh, the just of the front of their building. It's pretty cool. Um, all right, then we went inside, and we, uh, the, the main office and the entrance there, and we picked up our safety gear. Uh, we had to have some steel toe uh, uh, slipovers and the safety glasses and some earplugs and uh, all set up uh, ready to go inside while we we're in there uh, on the back wall there we got a good uh, glimpse of all the partners together uh, in with uh, Linux, Black & Decker and so on alright we took a quick quick walk through part of the shop and met into a conference type room and we went through uh, safety orientation a little bit of a, a video uh, clip there I don't even have a saw, now I just got two blades <laughs> <laughs> Safety thing is just ridiculous no, I'm not even sure why we need to do this And we had some of the products there and then we, we started getting briefed on what we were actually going to be uh, seeing on that day and what Linux was doing was introducing a new range of jigsaw blades. All right, now, that, that, I, I don't know anybody that hasn't picked up a jigsaw one time or another, done some hole cutouts, some scrolling curves, anything that you're not going to rip a straight line with with any of your conventional saws, and you might even come in with a hole saw and come in and, and square out an opening. Uh, there's a lot of uses for jigsaws. Did I ever think that me as a, a machinist, com fabricator, welder, uh, jobber in the shop would uh, would be impressed by a jigsaw? Well, that day I was. All right, woodworking, construction, metal fabrication, specialty trades, industrial maintenance, repair, and operations now are being covered by uh, the new technology of jigsaws that they're putting out. They. Um, showed us new process where they actually do a power blasting which uh, the power blasting is just like peening in in miniature form because the you know jigsaw blades are are small and they they needed to perform um, the peening on the on those areas that they needed to pay attention to on the jigsaws to make them stronger just like a needle gun or a regular ball peening and you stress relieve that surface and so they they do uh, 
uh, include the power blasting technology and they actually showed us um, in the plant there part of that process going on which was pretty cool. Um, the woodworking uh, range was also strengthened by precision grinding teeth. You know I always you know I wasn't sure exactly how teeth were put in on the jigsaw but I always thought they were uh, they were pretty sharp but when you're <laughs> when you're on the floor and you're right next to the machine where they're coming off and they had just been ground uh, razor sharp um, you know you you can you can cut yourself almost looking at them we did we went out for hands-on demo and uh, and then we started out with the woodworking blades that they had and we followed along and I, I kind of got the camera up over uh, everybody's heads there and we got to see some scroll action and Linux was comparing their blade to their next best blade that they consider their competition at and that was Bosch so we we were comparing our blades to Bosch and uh, so we we're doing cut comparisons and everybody got a chance to see the difference between the two but also get behind the the uh, skill saw or the saber saw and run the jigsaw blades that uh, uh, we had at hand there and uh, so anyway on the wood we actually got to see cleaner cutting with less burning on scroll cuts and things like that and uh, you know they just proof in the pudding was uh, looking at the layered layers of laminate that uh, we were cutting through they had pretty good pretty good samples to actually test on so it was uh, it was it was a real deal and I mean when you got on behind the tool itself right there it was uh, it was a real deal okay on the metal cutting blades and this is where it pertains to my 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 trade and many many of my viewers there are all all playing with the metals and uh, you know I mean there's you know I got the plasma cutter and we got machines and the, the mills and stuff but there's still gonna be that possible pro um, project that we're gonna have that's already kind of constructed and we need to do modifications and stuff and that's where the the maintenance uh, um, maintenance repair and operations and you know whether you're you're a jobber in a shop taking on that from outside source or if you're in a plant and you're you're inside sourcing that skill for them um, you know that this this really is going to be beneficial to you and the need um, okay the power blasting technology they did that as well and they also have what they uh, the pri uh, proprietary uh, T2 technology is what they call it and um, that you know when <laughs> you know you go no I don't know what that is that is you get there and uh, when you when you're behind the jigsaw and you you're uh, coming across that plate of steel and you're just doing it within seconds uh, you can call it whatever you want okay I just know that I'm gonna get there from here and uh, and I tell you when when <laughs> when I had that Bosch uh, bit in there I wasn't sure I was gonna get there um, okay uh, tough app cutting applications steel plate stainless steel um, they also introduced the curved or arc blade and that that was super interesting to me uh, on and I was kind of looking at that blade seeing that blade for the first time holding that blade and looking at it and I it, you know it really does make sense not not just optimizing on the pull up but when that reciprocation of downward motion is made as you've got your force on there the curve of the blade is actually going away so you're you're actually less pressure rubbing backwards on your blade because normally on a skill saw you're at a constant forward motion so you're rubbing up and down and that arc blade my theory maybe I'm wrong but my theory you have less pressure on the back on the back stroke uh, going away from your material and with that said that means you're gonna have less wear there you look at when I'm pushing across with that Bosch blade um, you'd almost swear I had a abrasive cutoff wheel in that, <laughs> in that saw uh, so we had some hands-on um, time there 
and all of us took turns and we were looking over each other's shoulders and um, it, the, the proof's there. The stop wa uh, clock on the back wall with a close-up, um, you, you're seeing right there firsthand. I was glad that I had the Osmos camera and, and set it up so that I could have the microphone there. Otherwise, besides having the microphone on there, I had earphones on or earplugs and you really can't hear too well except for the person that's talking to you through the earphones or the yelling uh, going on. Uh, so it was kind of nice to actually get a good clip of me uh, pushing this across and, uh, and hearing what I'm actually saying uh, and the amazement that I had. All right, he's got a plate here. And we've got four or five lines here. And uh, I guess this is my pool. Do I need gloves? Uh, not enough to water. All right. You want me to try to swap the blade for you quick, just so you can keep it on one shot? Yeah, yeah, if you like. I'll try to make it stay in this time. <laughs> Yeah, let's go ahead and go with the timer. We know that the blade's going to stay in there right now. Yeah, sure. Are we ready? Yep. Okay. Pushing it. This is pretty good fireworks. I don't know if you can make it. Woo! <laughs> uh, I don't want to do that too many times. Let's see, what we got? We got uh... Damn, that one was... <laughs> that was a light show. Yeah, it was. That one was burning up for you. Woo! Okay, so now we're trying, we're trying the Linux blade here. And uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, we ready? That could blast through there. Uh, all right, we're gonna go another one. I think if I cut this one, I'll be equal to the other blade. Possibly, what have we got for time? 12 seconds. 12 yep. seconds. The other one was 58. 58. I can cut a few more and get that time. Excellent. Excellent. I'm happy with that. But, uh, you want to do that. blade, try to do an S shape or something? Um, yeah, yeah, same blade, right? Uh, yeah, if you want to. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's see how long it's going to last. Uh, a couple of guys cut this. Okay, give me an S. Oh, you want that? Yeah, draw it out.
All right, here we go. On the line. like a sports car ride. I was in on the close and out on the wide there. So, <laughs> hey, but that handle that. And it don't, show, it don't show any signs of wear yet. Excellent. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thanks again. What was your name again? Keith. Keith, Andrew. Andrew. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much. Okay, after everybody in the group, which I felt actually privileged because the group that was invited over for the media uh, was only a dozen or, or less than a dozen different people from all media um, orientations, you know, writers and, and YouTube and, and uh, reporters of, of different, different medias. And so we all got, we broke up in two groups to, uh, to take a, a tour. So anyway, our group first went through the inspection area of uh, the plant. The plant is 13 acres under one roof. So the the testing is basically almost four categories of testing. They have actual machines. Uh, they even have machines brought in from other countries that run their blades in other countries and they have them there at the plant and they run their product continuously through those those machines and that's testing their product with those machines. They also have simulators that actually simulate longevity of each of those blades or the blades that they happen to be testing. And we're not talking about just jigsaw blades, we're talking about band saws and we're talking about reciprocating blades, and we're talking about hacksaw blades, all, all, all of those um, that fit all underneath the, the, same, the same type of, of testing. So, you know, some of that, the testing and everything else is is done there but there's other there's two other kinds of testing and one is them actually physically testing the products there just like we were doing in our demonst you know in the uh, in our testing but also they want field tests by um, outside sources out in the field so they went ahead and they gave each one of us a uh, kit and in this kit, we do have a new DeWalt jigsaw, and we have a package of bits. And I will be, and everybody that received this kit, will be putting it through um, tests. Okay, we got a card in here and says thank you for being part of Linux Jigsaw team. All right, and they have uh, we have uh, um, samples of the Linux Medium Metal Power Arc Curved Blade, and we also have uh, the Power Blast Clean Soft Wood Blade. All right, now they said for free samples, send your followers to, and here's the link, and I also post the link in the description of the video. All right, and this is how you can also get free samples. All right. Now we finished up the tour going through the plant and we got to see uh, the basic raw materials that comes in. We learned that, that Linux, um, everything is made in the United States, but they start with the raw materials and some of the raw materials are imported from other countries. But the reason why they are and they are bringing those in is because of the quality of material. You have to start with a good quality of material to end up with a good product. And that's what Linux has been all along. Um, also, as they went through, and I'm, I'm 43 years in the trade now, and I've been with some pretty good teams, and I've also been in a few shops where the teams weren't really team. You know what I mean? And uh, Linux plant looks like one of those good team places. That, that's... That's the feeling I got in there. It was organized. It was clean, and also a lot of a lot of the uh, processes that go into it are really laid out nice. I've been in a couple big plants, and I've set up some assembly lines and things like that, and uh, it it's it's right up there. It really 
it, it's really nice and neat, especially how they put bimetal blades together and stuff like that. So I get a good chance to actually see that up front and close. And we took a couple pictures of uh, the the blades coming through. There's like 30 bands of blades going through and being the teeth being milled and cut in there uh, simultaneously. Um, and then section moves over and then uh, it's cut again. Uh, we got to see some of the machines that actually stagger the uh, the teeth uh, from side to side. Um, we got to see the pits that they uh, heat treat and stress relieve uh, their products. And uh, we we saw the power blasting, uh, the, the the setup for cutting and and grinding the uh, razor sharp teeth. And then we finally made it through their painting process. then their packaging process that uh, goes out and <clears throat> their their stock room and they and they ship direct right from uh, East Longmeadow it's pretty cool operation all together and uh, I was quite impressed uh, for I don't know what did I say uh, since 1980s or so I've been using their product and I I knew there was a reason but I didn't actually witness that reason until I had that tour at the plant so I think Linux very much for the tour and um, it uh, is a great experience and thank you very much I'll be looking forward to this and my viewers uh, let me know what uh, else you might want to see besides that flat metal plate and we'll see if uh, the saw blades can go through uh, or handle the job um, that uh, that's at hand all right until next time get her done